Hey, what's up folks? Welcome back to another Layer by Layer. In today's tutorial, we're gonna take a look at making some emeralds. So this is a SnapFit 3D printed emerald. And what's really cool about this, it is it has um, the Circuit Playground Blue Fruit. So I can use the Blue Fruit app for iOS or Android and change up the colors um, without having to like change the code, which is really, really fun. Really great way to kind of get your props remotely controlled over Bluetooth. So you can change the colors. Um, so that's really fun, and I like this a lot because it's it's got a really cool shape. It's 3D printed in this white translucent filament, so it has like really nice diffusion. Here it is, like looking all white. It's like you can't even see it. And so let me turn it all the way down, and it snap fits. So I can squeeze these edges and kind of pop it out like like this. Which edges? Those edges. Those are the edges with the grabbers. And you can see here there is the Circuit Playground Blue Fruit. I'll give it a little bit more color there. Wow. So what's cool about this is that it has two brackets. There's one bracket that is attached uh, to the bottom half and these little built-in standoffs. And there's a special 3D printed mount for just the Circuit Playground. Um, so that means you can actually take this out um, very, fairly easily. So I can grab these, these little tabs on the sides and kind of click this out. And there you go. You have a no solder, um, glowy Bluetooth controlled prop. Really, really great little piece of uh, kit here, the Adafruit uh, Circuit Playground Blue Fruit. It's my favorite because it's got the Bluetooth chip, the NRF 52A40, and you don't have to solder any NeoPixels because they're built in. You have capacitive touch pads, it has accelerometer, built-in speaker if you want to do some fun stuff. Um, so that's really cool. And then for the battery, it's just this little 500 milliamp LiPo battery, and it fits right in between the standoffs there. Uh, this is a really cool way to kind of do this. Um, so check out the links in the description if you want to uh, purchase um, the Circuit Playground Blue Fruit or get notified when they're back in stock. The way this gets fitted is you just kind of have to massage it in between um, the standoffs. So I'll avoid that right now. Um, but uh, these two snap fit. You can see that the grabbers are on the sides here. And then you have these flat walls that kind of uh, stop it from sliding out. And then you have two nubs here on the inside. So this is all just uh, a millimeter, 0.2 millimeters um, thick and you get some really nice diffusion here. Um, and it, there's no infill, it's just um, perimeters, shells. So it's really nice and you got some fillets there. So here's the learn guide. You can uh, get the STLs in the Fusion 360 file. The code is here as well and some links to some of the products like the batteries. So check that out. I'll have a link in the description. Um, there's also some tips here on 3D printing it with the brim and uh, setting your extrusion width so you're only printing perimeters and no infill. Cool, so let me go ahead and jump into uh, Fusion 360. Uh, so this is the original kind of file and it, it does have the Circuit Playground Blue Fruit. Um, let me see here if I can bring the mount back in there, there you go. So you can see here that um, the Circuit Playground Blue Fruit is a 3D model that you can download if you wanna use it in your projects. You don't have to, but I did in this one. And uh, we're gonna make this one and I'll show you folks how to make it snap fit. So uh, make a new tab here and uh, let's make a new component. Let's bring this out here in the middle and name this Emerald. Cool. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and make a uh, sketch. So I'll sketch on my floor plane here because that's kind of when, I, when, I, when I'm ever I'm sketching things, I think about, okay, where is it going to be oriented on the 3D printer? And I kind of design around that. So I'm going to design with this floor plane, right? Another really important tip is to draw things on the very center of your grid. So I'm going to start, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use a polygon tool and my sketch shortcuts is one of my favorite ways to get anything. I could just type things out like poly. And there are, in here are all the polygon sketching tools. My favorite one is circumscribe polygon. I really like that one, so I'll click that. We're gonna start in the center, so click in that center dot there. You can see it turns into a square, letting you it's gonna lock into the center. And as I move my cursor out, you can see uh, I'm, I'm creating a dimension. And there's another input here, it's called edge number. We want to change that six because that's the default number and, and double that. So make it tw <laughs> double that, make it 12 and uh, okay. So now I can tap again and I can give it a dimension. Let's do 50 millimeters because that's a good number and uh, I'll click here. Now you'll notice that this isn't fully straight. So what I'll do is I kind of want to define uh, some constraints because right now I can kind of drag it around and, and that's not going to work when I'm trying to make my snap. So I need to define a very, uh, either it's going to be horizontal or hor horizontally constrained. So I'll click on this edge and then at the top here under the constraints, I'll select horizontal and vertical 
and that'll just straighten it out. So now it can't move. It's always going to be horizontally or vertically constrained, depending on if, whether it's horizontal or vertical. And that applies through all of these two. So if one is, is uh, going to be, the rest of them will kind of apply to it. So that's kind of nice. All right, so now that I have defined that, I can hit OK, Finish Sketch. And I'm going to start drawing out the two halves. So this is going to be two halves. So I'm going to start with the bottom half. So I select the profile, and then I'll use the, the hotkey E to extrude. Right? You can see that's already selected it for me. Now I'm going to bring this down. And when you bring this down, after you let go of the air, you see this little handler here in this taper. So I want to add a taper. And I like a 40 degree taper. And this, since this is the bottom of the gem, it's a little bit too long. So I'm going to kind of bring it in a little bit more. And this is where you, it, your intuition will have to, uh, whether you're like referencing something or you're just kind of looking at the proportions, you can change this later. So I'm going to, let's do 14. That looks OK to me. So that's the bottom half. I need a top half. But in order to make the snap fit, I kind of need to make a straight edge thing here. So let's stick with, uh, let's put six here. Actually, 10. I'm going to do 10 because I want a lot of room so you can see how the snap fits are working. So I'll do that. And now I need to make another extrusion. You can actually extrude off of a surface. So I'm going to hit the surface, select it rather, hit E on my keyboard, and then make it tall. Now, I want to add another ta taper to this. So let's taper this out and use the same degrees, 40. But you see that it's not, I don't have enough height to kind of close this off. So let's just go all the way. You can see here you can keep going, but the taper is just going to close into itself and it makes it out of, out of point. And that's kind of what I want. I want that point. So I'll hit OK. And now take a look at our gem, our emerald, our diamond. You notice that we're kind of missing some of those iconic cut triangles that are kind of go across here. So if we look at our original one, you can see that there's like these triangles. How did you get that? Well, you kind of have to cut those away. And the only way to do that is you kind of need to create a new plane using points. So what I'm going to use is the under the construction window here, there is something called a plane through three points. Creates a construction plane through three point, three selected construction points, sketch points, or vertices. You just select three points, and it'll create a brand new plane that you can sketch on top. So let's click that. And we kind of just need three. So really, the cut needs to be here here and here. And bam, that is what we need. That gives you a little preview of what your plane looks like. Hit OK. Now we can actually select that plane and start drawing on it. So I'm going to uh, create a sketch on there. Now I need to project in those, those dots that we, uh, that we selected to create the plane. So I'll use uh, the hotkey project P on your keyboard. So now you can select those points. So it's this one, this one, and I think this one's already there, but let me click it anyway. Three are selected, and hit OK. Now I need to use the line tool to connect those three points so it creates a profile. So let me connect those, being very careful on actually collecting those dots. And now you can just hit the E key without even hitting Finish Sketch. Just hit E. It already selects what you drew, and that's perfect. So I can ro revolve around, maybe use my space mouse, and then just create this extrusion here. And that's the cut that we need. It's a little triangle cut. So hit OK. And now that we have that one side, we just need to replicate this six times going across in a circle. So uh, let me name our things, our sketches. So this one's called profile. And this will be called our gem cutter. <laughs> Why not, right? So what I can do is hide that. And so now I can bring up my sketch design sketch shortcuts. I'll type in a pattern. And I want to use a circular pattern. And for the type, make sure it's set to features, because now for the objects, I can select that one extrusion in the timeline. For the axes, I want to use the Z axis, which is that blue line. So I can select that. And for the quantity, normally it's set to like one or two, but I want it to be six. And you can see here as a preview, it, that's what it's going to look like without the green, of course. So hit OK. Now you can see that is our gem cut. Very cool. All right. Next thing I want to do is add some fillets to all these edges. But there's a lot of edges. So what you can do is you can use some selection filters to make it a little bit easier. So I'm going to uh, look at this straight on through using the view cube. Just look at one of the sides. And I'll bring up the sketch, uh, or rather the, the fillet command. Uh, the hotkey for that is F. Or you could use the shortcuts and just spell it out. There's fillet. 
Um, the type is just a regular fillet, but the thing you want to go to is up here where it says select, and you go down to selection filters, you can actually define uh, what, you know, what thing you want to select. So I'm going to hit select all, so it turns them all off. And I only need to select the edges of a body. So I got that. And I'm going to use a marquee selection. I'm going to click starting from the right hand and then drag all the way to the left. And that'll select through the solid body. So I just selected 66 edges. I didn't select any of these top ones here because I kind of don't want a fillet there. I just want a fillet on all the edges. So I can add a number here. Let's do like one millimeter, two millimeters. Two millimeters is kind of nice. Let's try three. Three looks good, I like three. Cool, and you're gonna wanna change the number uh, depending on how the scaling of your, of your gem, diamond, emerald. Cool, so that looks kinda neat. One of the things I like to do is, is add appearances to it. So the appearance window it lets you play around with materials. So the hotkey to bring that up is A, A for appearance. And normally it's supposed to be closed. So scroll down to the, to, uh, to the plastic material and scroll down to transparent. Click on it to open the window. Here's acrylic. There's a red one, but I'm going to use the clear because when you drag and drop this onto the body, you can right click on that acrylic and give it a color. Let's give it like a purpley color. You can see as you go deeper, it gets darker. So we'll go something like that. And that just lets you see it as if it was, a, you know, a, a clear, nice see-through diamond. You know, it kind of helps you have some contrast when you're designing. So that's why I like to do that. All right, the next steps we want to do is we want to create a, uh, we want to split this into two pieces. So I'll use this uh, offset plane. And what I'll do is I'll look at it this way. I'll click on this plane, click and hold so that I can get the depth here. And I want not a face, but the X and Y plane. And if I look at it on the right, you can see here that I kind of want to uh, make this go in the half here. So I'll have to put, um, I think that's right. So I'll hit five and hit okay. I think my my thing was 10, right? Yeah, see, when I made this uh, extrusion, it needed to be straight up with no taper so that I can have flat surfaces, straight on surfaces to create those grabbers and those nubs. So that's 10, and what I did was I made this five, so it's kind of in the middle of that. So that's kind of what I want, so that's why I put five. Cool, so now I can um, select uh, or I can use the split body. So under the design shortcuts window, I split, spell out split, and there you have split face and split body. I want to split body. Select this as the body. My splitting tool is going to be this. Oh, it's hard to see it. So let's click, hold down the click, and then let go, and then you can select uh, this plane two. You can see faces and all this stuff. So I'm just going to do uh, plane two because that's what we created. You can get a little preview of where it's going to be. It's pretty much in the middle of our flat extrusion there. So I'll hit OK, and now I have two surfaces, two bodies, rather. Get my terminology correct. Let's go ahead and name these. It's going to be the bottom half, and this one over here is the top half. Cool. Let's do a section analysis. Uh, this button up here under Inspect just lets us do a cross section. So I'll zoom out so I can actually select this thing. And now you can see here, those are solid. I know it's transparent, but it's still solid. So what I'll do is uh, hide one of these, and I'm going to do a shell. So I'm going to select the surface here, and then bring up my design shortcuts window, type in shell. You want to pick this one because this one's for solids. This one up here is for um, not solids, uh, surfaces. But we want to do this one because it's for solids. All right, now we can add a, a value here. So I will say 1.2 millimeters. That's the that's the um, the value that I used for my project, and I can leave the direction on the inside. If you have a you know if you want to do it on the outside or something, you can do that. But I'm going to leave it on the inside. You can see kind of how it's working there. If you hold down the Command key on a Mac or Control on a PC, you can kind of preview what that looks like, what it's actually doing. So that's my 1.2 millimeter thickness. I'll hit OK. I'm going to repeat the pro the process uh, for the bottom half. So I have them both open. Let's go ahead and turn on our section analysis. You can see here one is now shelled, and this one isn't, so doing the same way. Select the surface, bring up our shortcuts window, type it in shell, select the right one, 
1.2 is our thickness, and hit OK. Cool. And to differentiate them, why don't we add another acrylic color and change it to like green. <laughs> why not? Just to kind of differentiate them. Give it some contrast. Cool. Now we can look at them in the side. So cool. So now that we're looking at on the side, this is where we can kind of get an idea of where we need to create our snap fit geometry. So what I found was that um, the bottom or the top half, this little pointy bit, this one works good with the nubs and the bottom half works good with the grabbers because um, when you're 3D printing, you can just print this like uh, this, this, uh, this, this top half, you can just print this like this, no support material because it's already at a, at a 40, 40 degree angle. So your printer can do that no problem. And so that means I'm going to add nubs to these edges, not all of them, just two. And then the bottom half, well, it's going to print exactly like this, where this surface is touching the bed of the 3D printer. So that means you can have your grabbers coming out here. So that's how I'm going to do it. So let's do the top half first. Looking at it on this side, I'm actually, this is where I'm going to create um, our geometry to create our, uh, our nubs. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's look at straight on. So I clicked on the, v on the right side for the V-Cube. That way I'm looking at it straight on. Now I'll create a sketch and select this surface or this plane, okay? And now what I'll do is I kind of want to project in this surface here. So I selected that surface, I'll project it in, and that'll give me a line that I can reference. So this is where I want to create my, um, my nub. I actually want the nub to start right here at the, the bottom tip here. And it's going to be a triangle like this. And um, make sure that your line ends up right here on that line there. And that'll make it uh, coincidentally constrained there. So it's nicely locked in there. But we need to apply a, a dimension size and some degrees. So I'll say this one and this one. I held down shift. Now I'll hit uh, the letter D to do a dimension. And it's turning it into a degree. And I want 45 degree angle here. And then for this and these two, hold down shift to select them both. I actually want to apply a perpendicular. So that makes it a 90 degree angle. And now I need to define, hit the escape key so I can click on this, hit the D key for a dimension and then click on this line. And now I can do a dimension here. How big do you want your snaps to be? I think three millimeters is a good number here. And that automatically shifts it down. And now I have a profile that I can extrude from, which I just hit the letter E. I'll go ahead and turn off the section analysis. And then I want to change the direction to symmetric. Now I can pull this edge here like that. Cool. Wonder if I could do a 45 degree taper here. Nope. Let's put zero there. <laughs> All right, so I'll hit OK. And one thing I like to do to kind of smooth this out is I can do a drafted angle on this surface here. So select this surface here as my pull direction. And then I'll, I'll say um, I want to draft. OK, hit Enter. My pull direction is already selected. I'll select the face, this one here. And you can see my 45 degree angle is already there from the last time I used it. And then I'll, I'll revolve around it, hold down Command or Control on PC, and select this surface. And you can see here what it's doing. It's just kind of bringing those edges inward. And uh, that'll just make the snap fit a little bit smoother. I just think it looks better on your printer because <laughs> it's not such a harsh edge. It's a little bit more gradual, a little bit more elegant. So now that we have our first uh, nub. Let's go ahead and name this nub. Hide that now. And then we're going to mirror that from here to this side. Let's go ahead and do that. Bring up the shortcuts window, mirror, MIR, select it. I'm going to put the type from faces to features. So that means I can use an object and select the extrusion and the draft. See, it says two there now. And then your mirror plane will be whichever one is this side here. You can get a preview here. And that looks like it's the right side. And hit OK. And that's how, uh, that's really all we need to do for the top half of our diamond. Now for the bottom half, this is where we need to create our snap geometry. So let me revolve around uh, the cross section and get a look here. So I need to sketch out something that's going to grab onto this nub. So let me use my space mouse so I can do one of these numbers. You really can't do that with any other input device. So shout out to space mouse. 
So I'll look at it straight on by clicking on uh, the view cube. Now I can see it straight on. Create a new sketch. Select this, uh, this plane. And pretty similar to how we did the nub, I'll select this surface, project that in, because now I can reference it, hit OK. Now I have these lines I can play around with. So what I need to do is look at it straight on again. Ooh, orient myself. And use the line tool. And here's how I'm going to do it. So I'm going to create this kind of thing that goes up like this. And as you're drawing out, you can see I'm starting to get um, perpendicular constraints. That just means I have a 90 degree, uh, a 90 degree constraint. So I'm going to go here, another 90 degree constraint. Over here, another 90 degree constraint. Over here, another 90 degree constraint. And that's kind of it right now. Let me hit the escape key to get rid of these lines, or to get rid of this line. Okay, so now I have these guys. And what I'll do is I'll shift this one up. I'll just drag this until it locks into that. Okay. And I can now define a dimension here. This is going to be my thickness. I'm going to be consistent. So say 1.2 millimeters. I'll do one here as well. Here to here. That's 1.2 millimeters. Now I need to start closing this off. So instead of dragging this line and dropping it over here, Let's just select this point, hold down shift, select that line, bring up our, our model. Oops, not that. That was the hotkey A. So let me do it again. Select a dot, hold down shift, select the line, bring up our shortcuts and say, I want you to be coincidentally constrained. That just means go there, like snap to that. Now I can drag this whole thing around here and see that like, it kind of moves around, right? So what I need to do is make another line I want this point to go to this point, and I want this line to be horizontally or vertically constrained. And now I can say I want that line to be three millimeters tall, and that's how I want it. Now I need to define a degree because there's no degrees yet. You see that? So I need to define a 45 degree from here to here. You can see it's 49. Let's make it 45. Hit enter, and now it's absolutely perfect. Perfectly perfect. Cool. You can see you have plenty of room down here, and you have plenty of room up here, so we're not going to crash into our grabber when we snap fit it. That's why I made um, I made this extrusion 10 millimeters, and then I used 5 millimeters to cut right in the half of it. So I have plenty of room for my 3 millimeter tall snap. Cool. So now I'll hit Finish Sketch, select that profile, start extruding it. Let's hide the section analysis. Let's hide the the top half, and I can start extruding this out. Let's make our direction symmetric, and we'll use that same number, I think it was 10, and hit OK. Cool. Now I need to add a little bit of offset, so I need to offset the face, so offset face, select that. And I'm going to bring these, select, hold down Shift to select both of those. I'm going to say negative 0 0.1 millimeter. And you can use the, the command on a Mac or control key on PC to see, uh, to kind of just hold it down and see, okay, so it's pushing it in. Cool. You can see it's actually adding a little bit of geometry to this little edge here. And that's, that's fair game. And why are you doing that? Well, because when I bring in the top half and I look at it, when I'm 3D printing, you'll, you'll be able to see that there is a little bit of gap there in between the surfaces. And when you're 3D printing, it tends to expand a little bit. So that just compensates for that expansion. So you're not too tight. And since I pushed it inward, I probably should push these two on the outside, push those outward, so not uh, a positive 0 0.1 millimeters. That way the thickness retains 1.2 millimeters. So if I select this surface and this surface and look at uh, my, my minimum distance, it's still 1.2. Otherwise, it would have been 1.1, and that's kind of weird. So that looks good. We could add some fillets and things uh, to smooth these out. Um, I'm just going to skip that for now. Because really what we need to do is create a, uh, a mirror, because now we only have one of those grabbers. So I will mirror that. So bring up my shortcuts, hit mirror, features. So let's select this extrusion and these two offsets. Mirror plane is this one. Get a nice preview there. Hit OK. Let's bring back the top half and do a section analysis again so we can see that the both parts are good. So that's good. Now the last thing we need to do is, is some, some end stops so that this won't slide out. Because right now there's nothing preventing the two from sliding 
away from each other. So the way I was able to do that was to create some flat geometry um, that kind of, so, so here, let me do a new section analysis under inspect, section analysis, and select this opposite end. So you, let me turn that back on. You can see these are where our snaps are, and this is where I need to create um, the, uh, the kind of thing that'll, that'll kind of stop this from sliding out. So let me create a new sketch. It's going to be on this, surf, on this plane. Click on the front there so I can look at it straight on. And this is where I want to draw the stuff. Um, similarly, like we did our nubbins, I'll select the surface, project that in. Now I have a line to work with. And all you need to do is start from this point, drag it up, and let's make this geometry like this. You can see I'm, I'm, I'm creating those 90 degree perpendicular constraints. But this one doesn't need one, so I'll just kind of go right there. So this right here is going to be our gap. Remember, 0 0.1 millimeters. This right here can be the thickness, 1.2 millimeters. And then this line and this line will have a 45 degree. And I can define how, how much thickness do I want here. Probably three is fine. And now a, a height as well, so maybe three here too. Cool. Maybe this can be two. It doesn't need to be that big. This is this is where it's going to start printing. So now we have this uh, this profile. It's kind of like a grabber, but just a flat edge, right? And it's super easy to print on a printer. There's no supports. It's just flat, right? So let me hide the section analysis and hide the top half or the yeah the top half. Change the direction to symmetric, and then start doing this. I think it's ten millimeters. Yep. Hit OK. We don't have to do any offsets because the offset is built in, right? So let me call this one the uh, the end stopper, and this one here, sketch four, is actually the grabber. We can hide those, bring up both bodies now, do a section analysis, and then we can see that uh, we do have some gap in between. And you can get a, an idea like this now will stop, will prevent the uh, the top half from sliding out. So you're, you're kind of accommodating all four edges. Even though we have 12 edges, you really just need to focus on those four edges. Um, so that is pretty much it. Yeah. Again, you could add some fillets to those grabbers if you like. I didn't, and they seem to print OK. And uh, that's kind of how you can make a snap fit ornament. Uh, ornament. It is kind of an ornament if you scale it down small enough, yeah. Um, some things you could do to come back in here uh, to make it parametric. Uh, you can add some user parameters. Let's say we want to have the thickness be parametric. And let me quickly explain why it's 1.2 millimeters. So my extrusion width for my 3D printer is 0 0.4 millimeters. So if, let's say, I want it to only be three shells thick, so just multiply that by three, and it's going to give you 1.2. See, 1.2. What if you want four? It's 1.6, what about five? It's two millimeters. So when you are 3D printing, let me go back to the thing here. Um, this is three, um, three shells thick, and you can see my, my fingers are shining through. So, the, so the, the more shells you have, the less light's gonna be able to kind of illuminate through there. So I found that this uh, 1.2 millimeters, it's all shell. It's pretty much like a vase mode without having to be a vase mode. And it is super clean. Uh, there is no infill because it's all perimeter. And it's got that a little bit of flex here. And it's kind of strong, like this isn't cracking. And the PLA is normally pretty rigid and stiff, but the structure of, of the shape allows it to flex slightly. So that really makes it nice when you're snapping these two together. It allows you, even with these like screws here, you can still flex it slightly. And uh, so there's my, um, my 1.2 millimeter thick uh, end stops and my 1.2 millimeter thick grabbers and they're strong they have not broken yet and I have abused it quite a bit um, but they grab really nice um, yeah I think if you if you dropped it, it it might crack but it's it's fine so I squeeze these right here on these edges to pull it out and uh, you just have to make sure that the nubs here because they're kind of hard to see but the nubs are right there just line that up with one of the grabbers, and the other one can just snap. So there you go. So let's go back to Fusion. 
There's our user parameter for thickness. So if you wanted to make it thicker or not, but I really like the 1.2 millimeter thickness, so I'm not even gonna bother with it. Um, if you want to check out how I did the standoffs in the bracket, um, you can always download the, um, the Fusion 360 file here and uh, take a look at the timeline to see how I created these, uh, these geometries here uh, for the snaps. I mean, for, for the standoffs, because there are built-in standoffs there for those screws. But that's kind of all I really wanted to cover. I hope you guys learned something. Uh, if you did, let me know. And if you have some other tips, drop them in the comments too. It'll help me out and other folks too. That's going to do it for this one, folks. Are you excited for a certain hedgehog movie? I am. Thank you guys so much for watching. Good luck with all your maker endeavors. Until next time, remember to make a great day. Make a great day. Bye, folks.